What's up guys? I'm Ashley Jenkins and Terraria creator Andrew Spinks has stated that he intends to design his recently announced sequel with multi-platform release in mind from the very beginning. It took nearly two years after the first game released on PC in May 2011 for the game to make its way to consoles in March of this year. Ideally, multi-platform release will be much closer this time. I'm wanting to code Terraria 2 in a more portable language so it can be released on multiple platforms at launch or close to launch, he says. Unfortunately, even though Terraria has gone mobile with releases on iOS and Android with a Vita version on the way, there's one platform we won't be seeing it on, and that's the 3DS. 3DS is something I was very interested in getting Terraria on, but the system unfortunately cannot run Terraria the way it needs to be ran, says Sphinx. But it's not all bad news for the 3DS. Nintendo has announced two new colors available for Japan, orange and turquoise. And they've been getting better about bringing their limited editions to Western markets, so if the Pokemon ones and the upcoming Zelda ones don't do it for you, maybe these colors will make their way west to brighten up your day. Next up, Microsoft has confirmed a nice detail for Xbox One achievements. You know how when you're playing split-screen multiplayer or couch co-op on 360 and an achievement pops up and you get excited but you don't know whose it is because the only indicator is the controller corner? Well, Xbox One is changing that. Now you'll be able to customize the color achievements pop in and it will also tell you exactly who's unlocked the achievement. Also, Sony's social media manager Sid Schumann has confirmed that PS4 will support 8-player party chat, so the same as Vita, which will be handy for getting large groups together online. Moving on, Square Enix veteran Tetsuya Nomura has shared more details about the feature hints from the recent Kingdom Hearts 3 gameplay reveal. The trailer showed the familiar Keyblade tech on the form of a pair of guns which Sora dual wielded to combat the Heartless. Turns out that's not the only transformation you'll see. Each Keyblade has its own unique transformation and the changes in the Keyblade will also affect the style of battle. They've also built on the free flow mechanic from Dream Drop Distance which allowed for more fluidity during combat and evolved that into a traction flow. If you saw the trailer, you couldn't have missed the inclusion of Disney-like rides in the form of a pirate ship and a roller coaster. Well, that's what attraction flow will be, and there will be several different ones. The form attraction flow takes will vary depending on the level and the enemy that you're fighting. Unfortunately, just because they've shared gameplay doesn't mean they're going to have a finished product anytime soon. This is the first gameplay footage of Kingdom Hearts 3 that we've released, but the game is still nowhere near a state that the staff is satisfied with, so we're going to continue to strive to improve the quality, says Nomura, dashing any lingering hopes for a prompt release. Finally, ticket sales for PAX East have opened, and they're gone. Or at least the three-day passes are. One-day badges are still available, so if you're planning on going, it would probably be a good idea to secure them as quickly as possible so you can come say hi to us. And that's the news for today. What platforms do you want to see Terraria 2 released for? Do you like the tweaks to Xbox One's achievements and PS4's party chat? What other Keyblade transformations do you think we'll see in Kingdom Hearts 3? Let us know in the comments below. Then visit roosterteeth.com for more of our videos. We've just recorded a new episode of The Patch that will be up tomorrow. And we'd make other stuff, but no one will stop playing Pokemon long enough to do anything.